previously on X-Men. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Panel the Panel, the only comic book web show that did a successful panty raid on the She-Hulk. I am your host, I am the Spin Dash, and with me is the Panel the Panel crew tonight. We have the Space Chief. Hey, everybody. We have Jules. Hi, everyone. Panda and Norton are here. Hi. The ladies man, Pedro. Hi, <laughs> to the man. And fresh off appearing at the Playboy Mansion, <laughs> Megan is with us here tonight. Hi. So, Chief, before we get into the topic, we have sat on a powder keg for what, two, three months now? We've been sitting on a powder keg? It, it's, it seems longer. It seems it, a lot longer than we've had to like, keep the secret. Seems like since July, but uh, if you watched episode three of Comic Book Men, you saw this dashing, debonair, handsome, articulate uh, gentleman at the beginning buying a uh, Howard the Duck number one, and that would be yours truly, the Spin Dash, uh, hanging out with Walt, Brian, oh, Ming, hey. and Mike Zapsick. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. We've been sitting on this for months because I was contractually obligated that I could not say a darn thing. I couldn't put it out to, on Twitter, Facebook. I couldn't say anything. But now I, it's everywhere. Now I've posted it everywhere, Chief. Ah, oh, man. There have been there were very few people who knew, and I'm very proud of them. And there were also some other people that we told who were also very very good and did not spill it. So oh uh, yeah, very uh, good. That thank they you did. to all those people. For keeping their mouth shut. It was a surreal. I went in August, uh, and for those who remember the uh, Nerd Herders uh, panel to panel crossover, uh, and when I was on the Nerd Herders, which Megan was on there with us as well, calling in to the Nerd Herders, uh, the daily show yeah. of uh, Geekdom. Uh, I actually had filmed yes. that morning. I filmed my part with the with Combin that morning before I went up and did the Nerd Herders. So it was like the Spin World Tour. Uh, I did the comic book man in Red Bank, and then I went up and did it, uh, went, went up with Foxy and Damien and did the Nerd Herder. So, fantastic, fantastic, uh, time. And do I have it here? Do I have the number one here? Or did I already, did I already put it somewhere? I do not know. It is, I, I my, keep it under lock and key. My goodness, Spin. You have had a banner year this year, Spin. I ha you know Indeed. what? You know what? I will put this out there. I'll be a sap for a minute. So Spin will be a sap. This has been the best we are because, first of all, I've met you all, my best friends in the entire world, and Uni, who could not be here because she's making that money. She's she working, making some money. But my best friends, we got panel to panel. This is our 27th episode right now of panel to panel. Very happy about that. Comic book man, nerd herder, and we're not done yet because we still have anime apocalypse coming up in December. We still have the yes, we do. The, we still have the chief and panda trip to the Rockford's greatest Mexican restaurant, Taco Bell. <laughs> and, That's right. Uh, Voted number one. Number one. Yes. So it is not. It, it is not over yet. But it spin is one man. I could not have done it without the panel, the panel team, and backing us. And then, of course. Uh, uh, oh, that was Chris who just said uh, he'd really like to be here with us, but he just got home from work. Well, Chris, don't worry about that, buddy. You you rest up. But uh, really like to thank everyone who's been with us, especially following the nerd for picking us up. That was uh, we were very proud to be a part of that website. Um, so not only is tonight a panel to panel, it is also appreciation night for everyone who has helped make this. And a big thanks to to Mr. Hendricks 
to Keith Hendricks. Big thanks to him for supporting us. Big thanks to the Space Wife. A big thanks to, what is she calling herself now? Dr. Dash? Not Mrs. Dash anymore. Yeah. She wants to be Dr. Yeah, Dash. She's the doctor. And she gets mad if you don't she's call her the doctor. doctor. Yeah, she's the doctor. So big thanks to her. Big thanks to Norton She'll for being you. here. Uh, and also, thank you to all of our guests this year. Thank you to Tracy Yardley, to um, to um, um, uh, True Heroines, to Jeff Burns, Mark Pizzula, Jordan Gibson, Megan, of course, who has joined us. Big thanks to Atomic um, Fist Punch, Atomic Fist Punch, Drew, Max Drew Maxwell. Drew Maxwell. Um, big thanks to everyone who's come Cole on. Beer. Cole Beer, Chris Williams. Thank you all for making uh, the Ed. first, almost the first year. Ed Pool. Awesome. Ed. Ed Pool. And Ed. Can't forget the Ed Pool. Uh, thank Ed you to all, all of you guys for coming on and uh, and chilling with us. But if you haven't seen... Also, Cousins, it's been something you forgot. Huh, what? If something you forgot, you bought your Howard the Duck on the very counter that Stan Lee sat on. Last season on That's Calgary. right. Where my Howard yeah. the Ducks... So you touched my, the place where Stanley's butt was. I have, I have physically <laughs> touched <laughs> where Stanley's butt has been. My Howard the Duck, its bag and board have touched the residue of, of Stanley's butt. <laughs> <laughs> and that is a high honor. That is a high honor. <laughs> that is a high like honor. And, 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 Ed a Poole, <laughs> and Ed Poole was right. <laughs> Ed Poole was right. Oh. Cover prices for su sales prices for suckers because I did knock them down to twenty bucks for my Howard the Duck from twenty five. Um, and that was one of the things I That's really right. loved about the episode is that they showed me critique. They actually kept in me critiquing the book because most people come in there and they're like, yeah. uh, like Michael, look at a book, or they'll be like, well, there's this wear and tear here, and the guys who are trying to sell the book or something like that is like, oh, well, aren't like cracks in a comic book spine? Does that mean it's vintage? And I'm just like. You idiot! <laughs> but they actually showed me critiquing the book, so I like that people know that. But they knew I was a true comic book fan. Uh, hopefully, I can go back there. It is a awesome, awesome shop. Most people think Midtown Comics is like the mecca. Screw Midtown Comics. Jason Bob's Secret Stash is the mecca of comic books. Okay, that is fantastic. I think it's that the people that work there still have the passion for comic books. They're still collectors. The Midtown's grown beyond that. It's a, it's a big corporation well there's they still have the passion and you think just the other week the creators of the people combo men walt flanagan brian johnson and them they put out cryptozoic man the new comic from dynamite cryptozoic man which is written yep. by the guys from comic book man which was one of the weirdest things i've ever read in my life i enjoyed it but it was weird it was weird but i <laughs> loved it oh it was off the wall they just I announced that it. uh that third part of the Batman story that Walt and uh, Kevin Smith were doing is going to be coming out yes. soon, too. Yes. That, so that is going to be pretty huge. If you want to see the pictures, go to facebook.com backslash spin dash productions. The pictures of me and the crew are up there. Uh, go check it out. But uh, so tonight, we last week, we talked about the one Marvel event that's going on, Infinity, with Colbert. Um, I think. It's just fantastic talk. But tonight we're going on the other event that's going on with the X-Men, the Battle of the Atom. Yes, indeed. Chief, how many parts was this story? How many parts was this story? Ten, ten parts. And it was kind of confusing because there were a, uh, there was a Battle of the Atom. Was it, uh, they ran through X-Men, all new X-Men, and uncanny X-Men, right? And then the was two the, uh, actual Battle of the Atom Wolverine issues. And, the and Wolverine and, the and Wolverine and, and Wolverine and the X-Men, yeah. That's yeah, and then there was, uh, yeah, the Battle of the, the actual, there were two uh, actual Battle of the Atom standalones. Now, that Megan, went with it, too. Megan, you think that's a lot? You should have seen the stack Chief held up last week for inf of all the Infinity titles. <laughs> Do you still have them? Oh, I, I put it away. I, was, I thought I had it. Literally, he was like, had to hold them like this. That's how many comics are in the Infinity. <laughs> yeah. so, so luckily, Battle yeah, of the Atom well, was a little bit. And everything. But let's run down what Battle of the Atom And I've added like eight more Infinity since then. Yeah. <laughs> but let's run, down, let's run down Battle of the Atom. So it all started with all new X-Men. This whole thing started in all new X-Men when Hank McCoy went back in time, brought the original X-Men, Iceman, Beast, Angel, Cyclops, and Jean Grey to the present. 
because he wanted the older, the, the younger Scott Summers to see what the older Scott Summers has become to try to make it so it doesn't happen. That way, uh, Avengers vs. X-Men didn't happen. Xavier would still be alive. Uh, he kind of wanted to rectify this, but it has be, it has grown mm-hmm. beyond that. It has become something where everybody is like, they can't be here. We cannot have these original X-Men here. They need to go back. Um, it got to the point that the, that original X-Men team kind of splintered because Angel ended up joining Cyclops' team, the Uncanny X-Men. Uh, Jean Grey kind of took a leadership role. We had a little bit of romance between Jean and Beast in an episode, uh, in an issue, which was kind of interesting. Panda hated that issue because of the artwork. But, uh, uh, artwork was horrible. <laughs> But uh, I have issues across the board, so I don't know if people have their say, and then I'm coming in. <laughs> Go ahead, Megan. No, I said I hate it when they do that. When they, you, know, you uh, sometimes you get maybe almost too used to an artistic style, and then they bring in a random artist, and it changes the art completely, and you're like, what the hell? So. Yeah, they just it. did that with with Guardians of the Galaxy. This, the most recent issue of Guardians of the Galaxy, the artist changed, and it's completely 180 from what it was. Um, but so we've got the original X Men, we got the two groups, we got the Uncanny, and we got the X Men, and then all of a sudden we get these X Men from the future, Chief and Jules. These X Men from the future. Yes, we do. Deadpool, Future Beast, Future uh, Kitty Pride. Uh, Zorn, which is future Jean Grey. Future Jean Grey. Uh, Gary. Well, he comes in. Colossus comes in in a different team. He'll, yeah. He uh, comes there. in later. But uh, so then uh, you have uh, the, the grandson of Charles just, Xavier. I just saying stuff because I, I didn't, didn't read it yet. <laughs> well, he is in it. Colossus is in the story. No. Spoilers. Yeah, spoilers for Pedro. <laughs> Spoilers for Pedro. Don't listen. He'll forget. By the time it gets there, it'll be two years from now. <laughs> no, next month. You're getting next month? They will start. They will start all new X Men and Uncanny X Force. So thanks a lot, Spin, for the heads up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, don't bother. We'll just tell you all about it. We'll just tell you all about it. Hey, I said if you, if, I said if you didn't want to know, you know, you could you can go get some sleep if you want. It's all good. Just turn your headphones down. Just turn your headphones down. Um, just, just say who is cool dying. Just say just say who dies. Uh, just tell you who dies. No, no we'll see. The beautiful part about this story, Pedro, is it doesn't really reach a conclusion. There's nothing that. There's really nothing to spoil here, in my opinion. It doesn't really ever come. It's going to continue on after this. So there, there isn't any real conclusion oh, yeah. made. Well, here's my thing. Here's the thing. First of I'm all, just messing. First of all, <laughs> who the heck is this grandson of Charles Xavier? Who? I mean, is he like? Who's the parent? Is uh, is Legion? Uh, is it Legion? That's Charles Xavier's son. Legion in X Men Legacy. Yeah. Is it That's his, son? His, his actual son with Moira McTaggart or whatever her name is, right? Yeah, is it Legion's Legion? Son? Yes. Xavier has a That's, son called they Legion. They don't really, they never tell you. What? <laughs> when did Legion become Xavier's son? Uh, the uh, he always was. He was just locked up. He's, he's so powerful, like they keep him locked away. So there's not much, a lot known about it, except for the, well, they have that, that X-Men legacy comic, I think. Yeah, that's about all about him. him. Okay. His time in the mental I'm institution. I'm going to that and I, when, I knew everything. What, they didn't answer something I want to know. How the hell did Beast get a tail and a horn? What the hell? I, yeah, I thought they stopped his mutation in all new X-Men, like in issue five or something. He's got like, he's I like, thought they like. It's like one half is Hank McCoy, one half is World of Warcraft Hank McCoy. It's like his avatar from World of Warcraft. <laughs> and they just spliced <laughs> them together. Oh, my God. But Okay, so these X-Men... See, I didn't up. think... He's a mutant. Yes, honey. But they, I know that. I know. I know. I'll shut up. He mutates. <laughs> I'm just going to go over and here he now. He seems to mutate a lot. I'm just going to go over I here. I know, but his mutation is such that, you know, remember, he wasn't originally like that. Yeah. So he can continue to mutate. He can continue. Well, yeah, they have, the, they have Young Beast in it, too. Yeah, Young Beast is there. Do, do you remember when 
when Kakaju starts to be uh, like uh, a little bit like uh, a beast. Like mm -hmm. yeah, like when yeah. he like you mean like when he turns into like feral Wolverine yeah, and becomes yeah. like real animal like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's like, yeah, he does that in uh, one of the Wolverine comics, or is it Savage Wolverine, where they they've got him tied up and they keep yeah. like they keep prodding, prodding him and, him and stuff like to get nuts. him to go feral. He goes nuts. Yeah, he like turns real animal, like just. He, I guess he he kind of mutates into that form, like when he gets mad, okay. because he goes from like regular Wolverine into like crazy Savage Wolverine. Because you had it, it was just funny because you had Human Beast before the mutation, and he's in the comic. Then you have Ape Beast. You have the the gorilla looking beast, and then you have beast with a horn. It was just it was just out there. But okay, so these X Men come from the future. They say the future is completely screwed up. It is messed up, and it's all because the original X Men are are there, and they have to go. They have to go back in time. It's the power of love. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, sorry. Now, what I was unclear about was the reason they came back. Because Allison Blair was assassinated, was that what they said was the horrible future? And the reason that I, I was totally unclear on that. I don't know. I was, I don't know I if that was their that. reason. Yeah. Go ahead, Jules. I would love to tell no, you. No, I was just gonna say, I I didn't understand that, and that's one of the codes that you gave me. And then when I read that, it made every. I thought I actually thought that's why that had happened, but yeah, they there didn't you really go, Pedro. Specify. So. Yeah, man. Yeah, and what's, honestly, oh yeah, Pedro thought, got a bunch of cool Wolverine comics. I'm not. I'm gonna say I was actually kind of excited when I read that issue, and it said Allison Blair, nice. the Dazzler, won the presidency of the United States. I was like, Disco Dazzler yeah. is president. That is awesome. <laughs> and then right at her, thank her speech oh. of accepting oh. she's assassinated. <laughs> 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 she did have some cool shoes, though. The way they drew her shoes were pretty cool. What's funny about it is that she didn't want to do it. The future X-Men slash Brotherhood, whatever they are. Yeah, there's crazy, there's crazy Savage Wolverine with its That's crazy awesome. hair growing out everywhere. But uh, she didn't want to do it. She was like, I don't, you know, nobody's going to vote for Disco Dazzler for president. And, uh... And the beast and uh, the rest of them were like, no, no, this would be great. You know, we can we can actually pull this off because you're the most beloved mutant there's ever been. And so they run her and she wins. And then like two seconds into her acceptance speech, it's like a pow, taken out. And I love it's Dazzler. Insane. I'm sorry, I've always liked Dazzler. Because I remember playing the X Men arcade game. If it, remember the old X Men arcade game that you could play as like six of the X Men, as like Colossus, Storm, Cyclops, and Dazzler. It was based off the Pride of the X Men cartoon series with Dazzler, and she was in her blue like like workout jumpsuit and the leather jacket. I always liked Dazzler. I thought she was always cool. With the headband. With the headband. I got her hero clicks over there somewhere. I got her hero clicks. Yeah, you got the good one. I got the lame punk rock dazzler with the guitar. You can't darn even right, I got the good, good. Darn right, I got the good one. I also got long shot. <laughs> yeah, I got long shot. My team's lucky because I got long shot. Uh, That's gonna be a rare one too because I haven't seen. It. I did get Colossus in a Wolverine and the X Men blind pack. I was looking for a Colossus and I opened it up. Boom, Colossus. I was like, That's okay. I got. He Odin. sucks though. I got killed with him. I got Odin. <laughs> Just wait till I bring Odin up. You did. I saw I that. I did get Odin. Um, so these X-Men come back, and then there's like, everybody's kind of involved with this. The Uncanny X-Men, Cyclops' team, the regular X-Men, Wolverine's team, everybody's involved with it. Um, then, we, and they, they, then we get this other group of X-Men from the future, which is Jubilee, who they call Wolverine. She, it's Jubilee, but they call her Wolverine because she can now, like, I guess, manipulate her powers to create claws. Uh, a a Fu yeah. Man chewed mustached Colossus. It kind of looks like it kind of looks like yeah, Pedro's he's mustache. cool, man. It kind of looks like Pedro's mustache. And he's got a, he's got that soul sword thing from his sister. He's got a sword. He's got the soul yeah. sword. Um, Quentin, a, a, in regards to Colbert, Quentin Quare. Or Quentin Quire. <laughs> Quentin Quire. <laughs> Quentin Quire. That was so funny. Who is the new Phoenix? He has a he yeah. now has the Phoenix power. Uh, some girl, Camara, the daughter of Storm. She's got like the panther with Chimera, her. Yeah. Yeah, the daughter of Storm. 
uh, Iron Lad, I guess they called him Iron Lad or something like that. Sentinel Boy or whatever. With that's the, the baby, right? That's, that's Shogo. Uh, Shogo grown up. Jubilee's baby. Yeah. Shogo. Uh, Wiccan, who is the new Sorcerer Supreme. And a my favorite of all the characters, Wizard Iceman. Yeah. <laughs> He's, so cool He's like Ice I King, kind look. of. I love his look, yeah. I was like, yes! He had a beard of ice. He had a beard of ice. It was awesome, and he had a hood on and a staff. It was like, it was like, rrr, rrr, was ice so man cool. powers you will have. <laughs> He's like ice Gandalf. Ice Gandalf. <laughs> the X Men Jean Grey. Is she secret? Is she safe? <laughs> She's really wearing a weird that? mask. You can't tell it's her. So they come, they they get brought by, they get come in, and they're so there's all these people saying they're the future X Men, but they're not the future X Men. <laughs> yeah. See, therein lies the problem. I was cool with the first four issues, and I loved it. And then when we we started getting further into it, when I finally got, I had to order five because my shop sold out. So I finally got that, and then I was able to read up to nine. And I just got 10 today and read it. But uh, I was thinking, you know, I don't think that there was anything that could have been done. I don't think that Beast would would turn and then become part of the Brotherhood. I don't believe Jean Grey or Kitty Pride would either. I find it hard to believe that, that uh, any relative of Charles Xavier would diminish his memory the way that this dude does. And I was, I was just baffled. I was like, what could possibly have happened? I can't think it could only be... The assassination of Allison well, Blair. I mean, how many of their compatriots have fallen fighting uh, for for mutant survival, and they've always still held Xavier's beliefs high, you know, on their on their uh, charter of things of, of how they are. And I just can't see Hank McCoy breaking down and becoming that insane. You know, it it, it just didn't fit for me. Well, I do have a question because you mentioned older Kitty Pride, but it wasn't Kitty Pride. So I have to ask, Megan, there's this character that is not Kitty Pride, is a shapeshifter. So, Megan, when did Mystique have sex with Wolverine and produce an offspring? Oh, yeah, that's right. And we have the proof right here, because there it is. We have the proof. There's your baby. This is that, the, uh... that is your baby. Yeah. I, 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 I saw that. That is and your baby. I that was a joke. No, that is your baby. I that was a joke. No, that's your baby. That's your precious bouncing baby boy. Bone claws. <laughs> Say it all. Oh my! I got some friends that'll be highly interested in that. <laughs> uh, I that's a that chapter eight. Story. Uncanny X Men number thirteen. I was, yeah, I was in the comic book store last weekend. And the last week, and I was, uh, or two weeks ago, and I saw that, and I thought it was a joke. Nope. That is your son. His name is Ray. This is in continuity now. R A Z E Ray's. That's his name, yeah. Ray's. But I like that name. I got have one child. And Mystic, Mystic and Cybertooth, they, they kind of have a history. Well, yeah, they have a history. Yeah, could be. But so, so there could be a, like, there could be a uh, lie. Eight, years ago. There's a story that I read. Uh, um, I, I don't remember if uh, if is uh, uh, the timeline or is a future story or another parallel universe that Wolverine is the uh, shoot director and Mystique is the his his lover and kind of his right arm. I don't remember. Was that some kind of uh... some? Some alternate, or, alternate universe? Uh, I, um, I don't remember, but I saw that. Well, let's run down. You let's run what? down. So, um, that seems out of character for Wolverine. Well, well you run got around. <laughs> well, let's run down Megan's children, shall we? Let's run down Megan's children. She has Nightcrawler. <laughs> Nightcrawler. With, with, with Azazel. Rogue. rogue. You, had, you adopted Rogue. Yeah. You had the. Uh, with Destiny, you had your little tryst with Destiny for a very long time. Uh, <laughs> now you have Ray's. Okay, and then. <laughs> so you have right, but, but, and of course there. I mean, there's there's Misty got around, honey. Um, I know <laughs> she she, uh, she was kind of a love them and leave them kind of girl. <laughs> it was just so, it was just that uh, was just like a curveball out of left field where they're like where like this guy shows up and is like, hey, dad. 
<laughs> yeah. On a, on a positive note, good. Megan, you now own an island from Hydra. <laughs> you, you, you bought an island from Hydra. Yes. <laughs> and now you, you own your own island. Now, if only we can get her the school uniform. It looks like I've uni- got some catching up to do. If only we can oh, get her the school uniform from the Hellfire Saga. Well, that, just that, just, that just happened. The Hellfire Saga. Let's get her the school uniform from the Hellfire Saga. <laughs> really? Really? The, the, really? <laughs> hey, you were hanging out with Playboy bunnies. I don't want to hear a thing. You were hanging out with Playboy bunnies. <laughs> oh. If only they were dressed. I was too, but they didn't know it. <laughs> how was the Hef? By the way, how how was Hef? Did you get to meet Hef? Very. Okay, seriously, um, and Mr. Hefner, if you're watching, please forgive me, but you you still had a very young and hot girlfriend on your arm that night. But dude, man, Hef's getting old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can see that when he's on TV, man. He's just barely getting no. around. Oh, I mean, he is getting. <laughs> oh, like Rick the old. He takes he's still wearing the smoking jacket around. That's well, he was, in a, he was in a prison. He was in a prisoner's outfit that night, little, and it was a little sign that said "prisoner." Oh, place. that's right. Oh. That was the Halloween Playboy yes. Mansion party. That would have been pretty cool to go to, really. Was Corey Feldman there? Was Corey Feldman there? I know he hangs out there like all the time. No. Can you name drop celebrities that were there? Can you name Because <laughs> we kind of want to know who was there. Yeah, yes, I can. Yes, I can. Um, yeah, we but, might be I good. Can, but I got a better story about Corey Feldman, though. <laughs> if it matters. Oh, tell it, tell it. We love Corey Feldman. Reaganomics. <laughs> Uh, no, but um, no, but the uh, no. I just uh, he throws some very wild parties. Um, yeah, uh, he's, he's, he throws some. But uh, no, there was some <laughs> awesome people. Uh, um, gosh, uh, Paris Hilton was there. I mean, you know, uh, a lot of heavy hitters, a lot of baseball, football guys who I don't even know because I'm not a. I'm not a sports person. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, a lot of girls with really bad boob jobs. Um, <laughs> it is California. It is the Playboy Mansion, too. Yes. Oh, my God. When you have torpedo boobs and no bra to bake them into torpedo boobs, <laughs> you need to sue your doctor, honey. Ooh. Yes. Ooh. Was, was, was Lindsay Lohan there? Was Lindsay Lohan there? I did not see her. I did not see her. No, no. She's probably on the bathroom floor. But, uh, where's the anyway. list, Finn? How about the Stamos? <laughs> I think one of the Kardashians was there. Like one of the younger Kardashians. Um, probably. But it's kind of hard to It's a little hard for me to say because it's like I was performing, and so everybody kind of turns into a blur at that point. Yeah. You know, it, it's Plus, little, you say too much, I'll never have you back because Hef's kind of picky about telling people what goes on in there. All you gotta do but, is go. Um, she, you know, she, she was, she was. I, I, however, <laughs> I, aside from someone randomly punching someone else in the face, everybody was well behaved. So. Really? Who did that? Just some random guy. I ha- I, I, honestly, I don't know, and they were actually still looking for him when I found out. So they were I have been in Virginia the whole time. I have been in Virginia the whole time. I have alibis. <laughs> I've been here the whole time. <laughs> yeah, they were still looking for no the alibi because they were not. They were like that kind of behavior does not happen at the mansion. They're like <laughs> that does not go down here. They're, they no they, oh, they the... run a pretty tight. They run a pretty tight ship there. Let me tell you, and they don't want you know their guests pestered or. You know, you're not allowed to be naked there. The only naked girl, people that are allowed to be there are the ones that are paid to be naked. You know, it's like, you know, they run a, run a pretty tight ship. It's pretty, um, it's not like like in our parents' days, apparently. So I'm told. Darn it. So. Like James Caan. You know James Caan would just go live there now, for like a month. <laughs> now, now my idea of the Playboy Mansion has been dashed, just like my idea of high school was dashed because of Saved by the Bell. I know. <laughs> I yeah. thought I was going to go to the Max every day at lunch. I thought I was going to have Screech before the weird video. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but it, it's still really nice, and you still get to see really um, pretty much nearly naked women 
and and a lot of you know drunken people acting the fool and oh. you know because like you're gonna find anywhere on Halloween or New Year's or God knows where you know Speak. it's 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 always fun. Speaking of naked women, remind me after the show to tell you the story of what happened to me in a Martin's parking lot yesterday. Panda knows what happened because I told Panda what happened in a Martin's parking lot. Remind me to enlighten you all in the Martin's parking lot after the show because I was like, what the F? But okay, back to the topic. Well, now I got to know, so I will remind you. You will know. Panda, you have been quiet, but this is your book. You love Battle of the Atom. I do. At first, I was really kind of concerned. I didn't want to start a whole nother thing with the Villains Month leading into Forever Evil and all of the infinity that I was very intimidated by the stack that was forever growing. I didn't. I didn't necessarily want them to mess mess with the X Men. The titles are always one of my favorites to read every month, and yes, but I I really liked it. They kind of. I think it took me. Tell issue or tell chapter five to get completely hooked, but and I've always like one of my favorite panels. I had to go and find the book, but my favorite panel is um, this one with Young Beast and the Iceman um, babysitting Shogo, uh-huh. and the Iceman is saying that he is going to go into the future. Or he's going to go back and and talk about cupcakes. And I was like, that's my favorite. Yeah. Comic time and I make yeah. cupcakes and that was like my favorite. And after that I was like, I connect. Yeah. So I that that was like my hooking point and I've been My hooking so point it was, it was, it was, it was, sort of because now like I'm going to have multiple titles to read every month. My my hooking point was when Deadpool said was, bury me in chimichangas. Sort of combined. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you got to um, think. Yeah, you can't. Like, Bendis didn't write the whole thing, really. I mean, I mean, it was mostly Bendis, but you had Wood and uh, Aaron mm-hmm. doing uh, parts of this too. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I don't know how together they were on it, but I thought, I thought that there was just like the way Bendis writes, and the one of the one of the issues I had with Age of Ultron was that he leaves a lot of like weird loose threads hanging, and I don't know if that's because he plans on later coming back in and tying those up or if he thinks he, he's not, you know, he doesn't want to dumb it down for people and, and over explain so he just leaves things open sometimes but see that was the, what I was drawing a comparison last week to Infinity is because like with Bendis a lot of times I have to go back like I'll read, I'll read forward and I'll see something that doesn't make any sense and I'm like when did this happen and then I have to go back in, through what I've already read and, and try to figure it out and with, with Hickman with Infinity to me why I like it so much more is because with Infinity it's like the stuff well, as you're reading it you, you keep progressing and uh, and at the same, Hickman doesn't dumb it down for you at all but I mean it's it just there's so much going on but you still don't you don't have to go back the stuff kind of kind of falls on you as you're reading it and you're like oh yeah I, now that's a lot of sense to me but maybe it's just me. It could just be me. I'm a big idiot. But, like, with Bendis, for me, a lot of times, I have to go back into stuff I've already read and be like, why is this like this? And then and then I either figure it out or I don't, or it's just a loose thread. But I don't know. It just seemed, like, anticlimactic for me. The whole... It's, I thought it was going to be, like, all wrapped up by number 10, and it's continuing on after that, which is kind of what bothers me about it. It's not because of the time traveling. It's not the infinity the, or it's, with, with, with Battle of the Atom, it's not so much the time the traveling. The it, it's not the time traveling. It's the fact that there are so many questions left unanswered. There are so many things. Yeah, that, that's exactly what I'm the saying. The entire time, they're like even like they keep saying. Gene keeps saying, "You don't want to know what happened in the future. You don't want to know what happened in the future." And even young Jean Grey, <laughs> she saw into the mind of the older Jean Grey, and she knows what happens. But still, nobody is telling us what happens in the future. <laughs> even at the end, they're like, "Oh, we can't tell you what happened in the future." Okay, you just had this entire thing where you came back, you made this big stink, you fought us, people have died, you, you've set, you've set yeah. shield and sentinels on us, but you're still not going to tell us why? That's like, that's like sitting yeah. a kid down in front of a, of a, uh, in front of a cupcake and saying, this is a cupcake, but you can't eat it. You can't eat it. Or don't touch this big shiny red button. Don't touch, yeah, don't touch, uh, I always touch the big shiny red button. <laughs> 
But you, it's, it's, there's so many things that just don't make... I, and I was loving it. I was absolutely loving it until this last issue. The last issue, I was like, mm-hmm. what? What the... F-? I'm like... I'm like, I'm like oh, baby. Cat. I'm like the treasure cat. Some go this way, and some go that way. It, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah. It makes no sense. And then Kitty, Kitty, why Kitty? Kitty cried. <laughs> oh, that was... I actually like that part. <laughs> That's one of the parts I like, that she... She went with, with Cyclops. Oh, I, I, well, nobody's going to see it until next week, so who cares? I'm going to ruin it. <laughs> she went with Cyclops. Like, she's like, none of you were, were there for me when I needed you to, to support yeah. me and believe me in what I was saying. And so, screw you guys. I'm going to the new Charles Xavier School <laughs> later. And she splits, which I thought was probably the best part of the whole story. I was like, finally, somebody is seeing it Cyclops' way. I'm so tired of Cyclops getting just berated all the time. By, by Wolverine, especially, a, 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 a cold-blooded killer. And they even have the exchange where, where he's, Cyclops is like, well, do you want to compare uh, body counts? Because we're going to need a calculator for yours. <laughs> and he, he tells uh, Wolverine that in the book. And I was like, right on, Cyclops. It's about time somebody threw this in his face. I mean, he had no control of his body when he killed Charles. I mean, he wasn't in his right mind when he killed Charles Xavier. And, uh, and it was kind of Scarlet Witch's fault to begin with. Scarlet Witch gets to be an uncanny Avenger, and Cyclops is a, a wanted criminal? I don't get it. Why are they so against him? I just still do not get it. His explanation is not good enough for anyone. I love new Cyclops. Or not new Cyclops, but old Cyclops that's gone kind of nutty and revolutionary. It's my favorite X-Men character right now. I think, though, between him and Cyclops, isn't it, though, that they just both love Jean Grey? Isn't that, like, what part of the... That was part of it, yeah. Because even, because even, yeah. Uh, yeah, they, part of it. they can't let her go. Well, even Cyclops like looks at Wolverine. He says, when like Wolverine is like, this is not our gene, and Cyclops is like, what do you mean your gene? She was never your gene. Yeah, she was never your gene. Yeah. <laughs> you know. I actually really like that part. I, I love. I like that part. I like the whole banter between the f- them. And- you want to know? The uh, funny thing I thought was funny at, at throughout the whole thing, the Wolverine keeps threatening. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Pedro. In, in the in the X Men, uh, the whole story, I I, I kind of have all the old books about it today. And uh, Wolverine is kind of getting the the she, uh, Xavier uh, more close and close and close. And Cyclops is is getting more like the second student. And then with this thing going on, uh, Wolverine is more. Uh, likely to be a savior uh, kind of guy than Cyclops. We have the the you guys read that that story uh, Wolverine the end where where exactly no. the, the Wolverine's head and they kind of they live they both live in the country. Uh, sorry, uh, savior lives in the Wolverine's conscience. So you yeah. ah. have the, this, this, this. Uh, uh, Cyclops has the, this, this mind uh, uh, connection with Jean, and Wolverine has it with Xavier. So uh, this maybe there's uh, some jealous, uh, not uh, Jean Grace, but the, the the kind of the mentor. Xavier is the mentor of Cyclops, and then. Uh, Wolverine starts to be this 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 golden this boy student, this, the golden boy. Yes. So maybe well, that's kind of what uh, they say. That's kind of true because uh, Cyclops says that you we're going to need a calculator for your body count, and Wolverine said, "Well, you killed the only man that matters." Yeah. And it says that back to him about it. So I mean, that's that's probably well, part of it too, Pedro. Well, you look at it. There's a lot the of the very uh, beginning. Everybody saw Cyclops as kind of the son of, of Xavier. Cyclops was like the son that you know with Xavier. He was the very first student. He was the leader. He, you know, he was the one that that Xavier he, they they had so much trust in. And then he obliterates him to be gone off and lobotomized by the Red Skull. 
Uh, which I hope they finish that freaking story arc in Uncanny Avengers. Red Skull taking the brain of Darth yeah, Xavier. They started getting back into it though. They, there was mention of the in the last couple of Uncanny yeah, Avengers. Have, one one or two about, back, they yeah. said something about the Red Skull. But uh, it's coming know, it's, back soon. And, but you're right because you think of all that Xavier did for Wolverine, you know, to help him try to get his memories back, to calm the rage that was in Wolverine for so long, to to kind of get the animal out of him and make him more of a man. You, you, you know, that's all there. But I'll say my favorite part of of Battle of the Atom for me personally was the interaction between Colossus and Magic. That was my favorite, where the brother and sister. Uh, that was right, good too. Because right now they're on the outs, and I think even like Colossus said after Avengers vs. X Men that if he ever saw his sister again, he'd like kill her or something. Because he's off with Cable. Colossus is off with Cable, um, uh, getting jiggy with Domino right now, which I absolutely love. Um, and Magic is with with uh, the event with the uh, with Uncanny X Men. But when she saw Cyclops, the future Cyclops, she like ran to him and hugged him. So there's still that. Or Colossus. There's still that brother sister <laughs> bond between them, even after all those years, and that's what I really enjoyed was seeing that brother and sister bond. Even in the last issue, that bond was still there after what happened with two Colossus. It was still there. Well, she even says uh, the future, uh, future you is is awesome or something like that because he's got he's more. Uh, He's he's like more violent, really. Essentially, he's more, he's more like more like her. He's carrying the soul sword. He's he's uh, he seems to have more of her attitude in the battle when they when they bring Future Colossus back. So I, I think that her and Future Colossus got along a lot better. Now, what do you think about? Uh, but we won't Maria, see what happens. The future. What do you Colossus? think about Maria Hill this entire time? The director uh, Maria Hill and how she's like, please don't let it be the X Men. Please don't let it be Wolverine. Please don't let it be Wolverine. <laughs> or no, it was like, it was like I hate Hank McCoy. I really hate Hank McCoy. <laughs> I absolutely love Maria Hill. I love Maria Hill in, in Indestructible Hulk. Her and Coulson are kind of like in charge of Bruce Banner in, uh, in Indestructible Hulk. And I just love her level of frustration whenever she's got to deal with Banner. She's, like, just tearing her hair out because he's, <laughs> he's such an eccentric scientist when he's when he's Bruce Banner. And then on top of it, he's the Hulk, too. So she's got to deal with him. She's got to deal with this rage monster and this incredibly self-absorbed eccentric scientist. One or the other, she's got to deal with him all the time. And she's just, like, has had her wits in with that. Plus... I will say about Battle of the Atom, I, I did like lot, a lot of different parts of it. It just didn't sum up enough for me. But one of the one of the parts I did like was Maria Hill losing it on the uh, on the shield uh, ship when all everything started firing, and she's like, "Who who hit the button?" And she she has no idea what's going on. And it's it's actually uh, wasn't it uh, Xavier's grandson that yeah that fired all systems yeah and like shield doesn't know what's going on and they're, and, and they're like well what did we fire on them and they're like everything anti anti mutant stuff regular uh and she's stuff like, everything just dropped everything just they had war tell me we did just not we did not just start a war with the yeah X-Men. hopefully we didn't start a world really, war with the x-men i really hope colby smolders gets a chance to play that maria hill in, in a in like avengers 2 or in an upcoming Episode of uh, Agents of Shield. I want to see Colby Smolders playing that Maria like Hill. The, uh, the more in charge Maria Hill, the more uh, yeah, the more uh, uh, sparking orders at heroes Maria Hill. Because I like her as Maria Hill. I did like it when they said Maria Hill was going to be in the Avengers, and she did a good job. And I liked her in the in the first episode of Agents of Shield. Because she kind of had that mm-hmm. that Maria yeah. Hill where she's like, we're not going to tell Coulson what happened to him. You'll never know, you know, that darkness to her. So I, I am, I, I'm hoping Colby gets a chance to kind of branch out a little bit more as Maria. Oh, I love her in the Avengers movie when she, when, when the tunnel's collapsing and she's chasing Hawkeye down the, uh, down the tunnel in the Jeep. That, that part is awesome. And she just comes crawling out of the rubble. Now, what would be even better? That's great. What would be even better is if you get Colby Smolders, Maria Hill, and then you bring in a, somebody to play Abigail Brand, and you can have Hill versus Brand and their banter that they always have about sword and shield. Really? I like Abigail Brand, too. Really? Wow. I love sword Ab- versus shield, huh? I love Abigail Brand. She's one of my favorite characters because she's so egotistical. And yeah, sword is the, 
sort of the uh, anti-alien department of Shield, kind of. They're kind of a branch. They're a branch yeah. of our our government that's kind of like Shield, but they deal with uh, extraterrestrials. And she spends most of her time like up on a, a space station or something. Now, Pedro, I will tell you, you will absolutely love Deadpool in Battle of the Atom. I saw some image, yeah. and it's kind of a silly, a silly guy. Oh, no, he's got some it's of the a, best. They, 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 he's got some of the best. They best do ride stuff. him like Deadpool, though. They ride him like Deadpool. They, I mean, all his stuff he says is like Deadpool. He he may not be going on a three issue pizza mission, but he's uh, definitely got the the Deadpool uh, <laughs> aspect to him. Like I said, bury me and chimichangas. Bury me and chimichangas. <laughs> he, he kind of meets his face, but we don't know. It's Deadpool. You don't know what happens to him. But okay, so where do you think we're gonna go from here? Anybody can chime in, Panda. Anybody? Where do you think we're gonna go from here? We're going to go to the Battle of the Atom Card Game. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that in the comments. There's an idea. <laughs> that is how it's gonna end. It's a thing for the card game. The whole thing was just a big advertisement. You have to play the game to find out how it actually ends. Kind of like the Secret Wars with the toy line. Ooh, Battle of the Atom Lego Marvel download download pack. DLC for Lego Marvel is Battle of the Atom. (laughs) Which jewels I did... Overall, I think it was a... Jules, I did unlock uh, Gamora the other day on Lego Marvel. I unlocked Gamora. Did you? Yeah. We're still on like the yeah. beginning. I think we got um, Hawkeye, but we're but I love my favorite part is where Hulk like if you hold one of the buttons, he changes into Bruce Banner, and then yeah. you hold it, and then he changes into the Hulk. Yeah. I love that because I did it accidentally, and I'm like, why am I Bruce Banner? I need to be the Hulk. <laughs> I couldn't figure out what I was doing, and then I, the I Hulk have, just breaks everything. It's so I've cool. beaten the storyline. I've beaten the storyline. Nice. Now I'm doing the free world uh, New York where I can get all the characters. I've got Howard. I got Howard the Duck already. I've been playing as Howard. Is he, is he really cool to play? I'm, I want to get him so he, bad. I just he uses, just haven't he, sat down to play it. He uses Quack Fu and a rocket launcher. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I thought the to get him, to get him, you have to input a code to get him. He's one of those ones you have to input a code. Mm, okay. I'll send you the code. Cool. Did you, you get, get um, rocket? I didn't get it. Did I get who? Yeah, I got. Uh, no, I don't have rocket. I have because uh, they don't. You they He's should. Th- I'm not going to ruin the game for you, but um, I've gotten Carnage, Black Cat, Modok, Iron Patriot, Tony Stark in his underwear. <laughs> Modok. Got Tony Stark in his underwear. Um, oh yay! <laughs> Uh, That's, he must have some special him. powers. I have I cannot, Nova. I could not control him at all. He he was flying everywhere. I have I have Nova, Gamora. Um, oh, that's cool. Did I, I get Did I get? They never Gambit? use Jubilee anymore. She's actually a pretty big part in uh, in Battle of the Atom. Actually, Jubilee actually plays a really huge yeah part. major part. Good. She's actually a major part of the X Men comic book, the regular X Men title. Yeah, they brought her back. She's She's uh, one of the main characters. They brought her back. Yeah, I like her too. uh, In the X Men comic, and she has a kid with her. She found a baby that was just like abandoned, and she now is a mother to this this child. But she still she's still a vampire. She's still a vampire. I liked how they wrapped that part up. Uh, um, they kind of wrapped that part up a little bit for Jubilee. They did. And I, they that, did. I did like that. Yeah, but that was good. I love that part. I thought that part, I was almost going to cry on that part because I thought she's like, I, I you know, because I don't think she realized that she was going to be able to, to do it, you know. And she's to like, raise I did something right. She you know, she was, You'll, Megan, there's an issue yeah, like of X-Men. I, um, I don't remember what issue it is, but there's an issue with her and Wolverine. And it's kind of like her and Wolverine are going around. And That's great, too. A very good dialogue with her and Wolverine like for the whole issue. And uh, mm-hmm. they're like out in LA, and like Wolverine takes her back to like her childhood home and everything, and buys her her childhood home. Uh, He's like everything. gentle Wolverine in that. It's one. gentle Wolverine. It's, Ooh, it's big. Like it's big. It's big teddy bear Wolverine. And and Jubilee. It is. He's, he's is, it, is, it, is it Uncanny X Men? No, it's just X Men. Or just regular X Men. Uh, X Men. 
just regular X Men. Probably, I think it's like issue three or X-Men. four. I think it's issue three or four of X Men. Issue three or four. But uh, no, she's a real big part of it right now with Shogo, and um, I, I did like the fact that the logo did. looks like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I do like the fact that they do they have started hinting more of her vampire abilities because she came out and she had to hold her hood and she's like you know the sun still oh, real yeah. gets to me and her son the, the elder son kind of puts his hands up she has like a light the bender sun, the shielder from the sun and he's like I remember and right. he and they had this really beautiful moment it was really like the only ones that had like closure in the book was Jubilee Shogo and Magic because Magic kind of had a little bit of closure at the end. But everybody else is just kind of like up there. Storm kind of did. Well, that, that's where I think it's going. You said you asked where it was going. I think what's going to happen is is uh, that's it's, we figured uh, Ch- Chimera or whatever. That's Storm's daughter, right? That they were. Yeah. Th- is that the one that's Storm's daughter? Who? She was the one saying she wanted to stay and hunt the Brotherhood. Yeah, with who? It's, it's got to be Wolverine. It's got to uh, be Wolverine. Wolverine, but, uh, Wolverine's a bastard daddy. Wolverine. Maybe, maybe it's Wolverine's Forge. Wolverine's a bastard daddy. Because remember, maybe Wolverine Forge comes me. back in. Okay, you mentioned Forge. Yeah, well, can I just can I just say my favorite thing right now with Forge is I love his banter, him and Doctor Nemesis and Cable and the X Force. They are like, I love how Doctor Nemesis just badmouths Forge at any given moment and like insults his intelligence and <laughs> calls him an idiot. And I love that book. Sorry, sorry. I don't even read that, but Forge, traditionally in the, the comics, Forge wasn't necessarily a brilliant... He was just had the mutant ability to be able to assemble oh, weaponry out you, of things, right? You've got to read Cable and X-Force. It is fantastic, especially the issue. Dr. Nemesis is literally riding a gigantic, like, sandworm, and he quotes Dune. <laughs> he, he, he's riding this giant sandworm. Oh, I love Dune. Yeah. He's, he's riding this giant sandworm, and he goes, He who controls the spice... Controls the world, and everybody's like, "What are you talking about?" He's like, "It's Dune." He's like, "Go read a book." It's Dune. It was great. I'd like to take a moment to remind our audience: please go read the six uh, the six original Dune novels because they are incredibly great. Just a shout out to Frank Herbert. Original. Yes, original. Sorry. Yes, yes. not the uh, not the ones written by Brian Herbert. Those aren't very good. No. <laughs> well, they're okay, but they're not—they're well, not as good as Frank. <laughs> yeah, but okay. So we, but we do know that from this, the original X Men are going to be going off with the Guardians of the Galaxy. We do know that. We talked about that um, during when we talked about the new Marvel now, uh, because now that there is a Jean Grey in the in the world again, there are a lot of alien planets that are pissed off because when she had the Phoenix Force, the other Jean Grey had the Phoenix Force. So I mean, just tore through the universe. So there are a lot of planets that are pissed off that Jean Grey is alive, or there is a Jean Grey, and that's where we're going to get the trial of Jean Grey, and the Guardians have to go and help the original X-Men out. So we know that's coming. Well, which will be interesting, because this Jean Grey has no idea that any of that has happened. She's still young, and, and well, she people knows. are going to be coming at her that she has no idea where it's coming from. Well, she knows it happened, because remember, really early on in all-new X-Men, she was able to see... All the everything that would happen to her in her life, she saw her own deaths and everything, so she knows what the other gene has done. Hmm. But okay, yeah, yeah. So we know we're um, that. We also have to remember that the Brotherhood is still running loose in yeah. uh, in in our yeah. our time. Ooh, let's get a whole episode where where mother and son come together. We can see Mystique meet her son. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. would love that. Absolutely. Whether or not they're going to acknowledge each other is another story altogether. And, and get Mayhew to do the cover again. That way Megan can be on another cover and she can be all like, you ain't my son, you ain't my boy, get out of here. <laughs> yeah. My, <laughs> Just my, pointing at the door. I would love get out. that to happen. Mike's, Mike's, uh, <laughs> Mike's not in charge of, of that anymore. I forget who he said was, but um, yeah. That would be petition. awesome, though. Hey, he, he does I'll gorgeous petition. work. I'll petition Joe Casada. I ain't got no problem petitioning Joe Casada. My name is on the list for releasing the Howard the Duck 25th anniversary Blu-ray. My name is on there. <laughs> oh, I forgot to mention. I mentioned Megan in one of my reviews for uh, for a book because it was uh, one of the artists that worked on the Mystique series. Was uh, it's one of the books I just reviewed. It's Brian. just totally slipped my mind. Brian Kibo. Yeah. But uh, Brian Kibo. Now it was. 
Thank you. Was it was it one of the Conan books? Yeah, but, uh, yeah it's on the following the Was it one of the Conan books? Uh, it was. It wasn't though. It was. No, it was. Uh, oh man. Saga. But it was. Uh, it was just one of the guys that worked on that series. I don't think it was like the main artist. I can't. Remember. It was somebody that was that worked on another book that I was reviewing. And when I when I was looking at the credits, his name was listed in the credits for the Mystique books too. So I said, who also worked on uh, the Mystique series? Who uh, panel the panel crew member Megan Ashley is uh, the cover model. So that's in my review. Yeah, but Panda, I can't remember the name of the book, and now I feel dumb. I wish Panda I had it right here. mentioned us all in her uh, Deadpool kills Deadpool review. So Panda, thank you very much for that little shout out in your Deadpool. First, that kills Deadpool review. Thank you, Panda. I had to. Like, I couldn't write that review without mentioning that we did not see the Panda Pool versus uh, Deadpool the Duck fight because Deadpool the Duck gets. His I know. I was really worried at first, <laughs> but snap. then, it, like, within the first page, I was like, okay, it's better. <laughs> but then it, it was still sad. <laughs> I still have to read that. I just got the new Deadpool Kills Deadpool oh, today. And I did I did I just got my books today. I did check out my copy of previews. Night of the Living Deadpool will be in print come January. It will be physical print in January. Yeah, that's that's I cannot wait for that. That is gonna be so awesome. So that is gonna be awesome. Adam with Battle of the Atom, that's basically our thoughts on Battle of the Atom, but we do have a couple other things we do want to talk about that books have come out over the last couple of weeks to talk about, such as Sandman Overture, Chief, Panda, Sandman Overture. I'm excited. I have not read it yet. I just I got it today. It I haven't read it yet. Me either. <laughs> but it's out. It is out. I saw the art online. I yes, Megan. Show me, show me, show me. really awesome. Does somebody, show have me, show Does somebody have the cover handy? Does somebody have the cover handy? Yeah, for, I, for, I do. Jules has the cover. Hold on, Jules has the cover. I do. Oh, wait, I, I have the regular cover. I don't have the McKean cover, but I have this one. Oh, I have a, I have a different one. I don't have that one. You got, you probably got. There were like five or six covers, I think. Mine is, there was a black and white McKeon variant, a regular one. How, when, when did this come out? When did it come out? Wednesday. Uh, and how this, did I not? Just this week. This? It was this week. Just this week. Just last yeah. Wednesday. Oh, you might have I know run. where I'm going tomorrow. Yeah. That's right. That came out. Sandman Overture. <laughs> I have not read this, but my guy at the shop says that this could be going into. Uh, this could go uh, further, even that there could be even more Sandman coming. From what he uh, was able to brought, um, extrapolate. The, the little, um, <clears throat> what do you call it? Value pack book. What? Uh, I'm. Um, I'm totally forgetting the term right now because you guys have messed with my brain. Um, of, of Lucifer. <laughs> Oh, that's the one you were because telling us about. That's just ago. awesome. Thank yeah, of, of Lucifer, and it's got like the first. It's got the first. Um, I think four or five trades in there. So yeah, that's not. Like, um, I have that too. I have it in the hardback. That's, oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's the variant. Yeah, that looks like a McKean. That looks like McKean. Yeah. Yeah, that's the McKean one. And uh, this one came out this week, too. It was a dollar. It was like a, they're trying to promote it, I guess. But they re released the uh, Sandman Volume 1 Preludes and Nocturnes. And this was only a buck. So if you haven't read early Sandman, you can go get these reprints. Oh, I've read them all. And uh, <laughs> they're, uh, they're only a dollar. Well, this is for the audience. If the audience is a fan of Sandman, <laughs> these are available. And you should be. You should be. I am. I've waited years for this for this overture to come out. Years, years, years. I am a huge fan of Neil Gaiman. I'm a huge fan of Sandman. Which is and I am excited. I didn't get a chance to dig into it yet. Yeah, because um, Lucifer is a great spinoff of the San of Sandman. Oh, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful spinoff. I, I started. I love that character uh, in the. Two or three trades, and I'm like, you know what? And, or first two trades, and then um, or books or whatever, and then so I went and. Uh, just bought like the what is the term I'm looking for like not the graphic novel but trade. The, you know the the trade hardcover <laughs> trade trade Hard, paperback the, um, the hardcover trade you know what I'm talking about it's the combo yeah. of like books yeah um, trade. I'm totally yes. blanking on my terms right now thank you trades oh, there's a lot of terms like omnibus there's okay, all kinds yeah, of things um, you can call them yeah so it's um, they're actually the original are actually not even issues they're books um, so it's got so th this one's got the uh, like 
first, I think, four or five books in it. And, um, and so the, so this is like issue one and then he's got issue two and, and I think there's like, I forget how many issues they've got to combine all of the books, but um, it's actually a really, really great spinoff for Lucifer, and it really delves into his character, and he's actually, they make him a pretty likable character, believe it or not. Well, the, um, the Sandman book did, too, like the when he left Hell and gave yeah, uh, he yeah. gave uh, Morpheus the key, and said, well, here's the, he emptied out Hell and said, here's the key, do with this what you want, and yeah. then like, he didn't know what to do with it. It was a pretty a great compelling storyline, story let me tell you about it. And, you know, it's a pretty compelling storyline that they've written for him. And he has a lot of references to Milton's everything. Paradise Lost in there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty, very much so. And I, Which was one of my favorite that. novels ever. And I've actually read it, so I know exactly what you're talking about. Well, I got so, it. Yeah, I love that book. I have to give a special thank you to Ian Flynn over at Archie Comics. Uh, this week, the newest issue of Sonic the Hedgehog came out. And we did get Antoine back. I know I'm like, I think Jules reads Sonic with me. I know she probably, I don't know if you probably haven't read it yet, but I know you get Sonic. But they brought Antoine back. For those on my sub, haven't read him yet. For those who don't know, Antoine de Colette uh, has been a character since, since ep- issue one. Uh, in issue, I think 227 or 228, somewhere around there, it was after the Genesis story arc. He gets uh, critically injured. He gets blown up and put in a coma uh, in his... Uh, by uh, while he was protecting the king and he's been basically in a coma we're on issue like 256 right now it's been an issue he's been in a coma for like over 15 20 issues now uh but they brought him back so i was very happy with ian flynn doing that so i'm happy to get antoine back in a book um this week also or since this comes out next friday the previous week uh damien son of batman was came out talking about damien wayne yeah uh, I haven't written, read it. Written, have not read that yet either. Written and drawn <laughs> by Andy Kubert. I can find it. Did I, Panda, you shook your head. Yes. Did I say something wrong? I haven't read it, but okay. I have it. I read it. It is. It it, it kind of feels like you're holding an old Batman comic from like the '80s. That's the way it looked. Like the paper feels and the way it was drawn. It kind of feels like you're back in the '80s reading a Batman comic. It's really good. Final issue of Lights Out, which we'll talk about next week. Lights Out, the Green Lantern series. I'm going to have catch some, up on that. I have some strong opinions. Yeah. <laughs> also, Ooh, Crown of Fools, oh, I, I got number that. one. I got that. I was, Chief, your I lady was Sif is back. Your lady Sif is back. I have not read this yet, but I'm dying. I've got like ten comics here that I am just chomping at the bit to dig into. I'm really excited I've been about trying that to pick one. up. I've been awesome. trying to pick up some Miss Fury, and uh, they they have not been having her. They haven't they told had me to come her? back in a few weeks. Oh. Well, they, told, they they put her on the order list, so they told me to come back in a few weeks. So hopefully this week they'll have her. They just started a new story arc with the last issue. Miss Fury is one of my favorites. She is fantastic. There's sure, Saga. She's on my list. They started out with it, and I liked it, but in. Saga. Saga. I love the cover. Oh, also this, this is really also what good. came out. Ash. And the Army of Darkness came out. Chief, you got that one handy? Uh-huh. Ash yes, and the Army I of Darkness. I saw that. I saw that. Kind of. Damn. <laughs> My books are falling all over the place, but yes, I do have it. This was a good week for books. Now you guys it are speaking is. my lingo. This is the cover. I got this. It's pretty sick. This is. <laughs> I knew you'd have that one, Jules. Powerpuff Girls. <laughs> I knew you'd have that. <laughs> Which oh, Jules. also King Conan wrapped up. Oh, yeah, King Conan wrapped up. Go, Jules, go, 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 go. guess what's coming out in January? What? DC is releasing a Vampire Diaries comic book. Oh yeah, I I, I did know that because Pauline Doran is one of the writers for it, and she, Doran, I always say her name wrong. She's one of the writers. They're, they have a whole bunch of writers, so I'm really excited. I saw a little preview of it online. I was like, yes. Was I? So I'm sorry. We know what's being added to Megan's pool list. Vampire Diaries. I did buy it. I did buy it, Panda. I bought it. I haven't we read it yet, but I bought it. We got I haven't read it yet. Either, Hold that up it. again. Hold that up again. This book was eight freaking bucks. The yeah, one that Panda has. We didn't buy it. Eight like, freaking uh, bucks. Uh, but yeah, I, I bought it. I didn't see what I can't see her. That's My Little Pony. My Little Pony. Oh, is that a trade? Like a mini trade? 
It's Carol. the it's That's the, the annual. annual. It's the annual. Oh. Uh, we lost three bucks. Bucks. Three bills. Which was kind of bad that, that they came. Me. How many they, covers were for that? For what the the uh, the annual? Just, I think just. They like just one. With Pony, with Pony, sometimes there's like two, but then like there's a spec, like Midtown gets their own cover, Hot Topic gets their own cover. Um, so it, it varies. Cause I like, I have a different cover of the regular Pony than Jules has. And yes, Itty Bitty Hellboy. Which, oh! Yay. Jules, you're not gonna be. You're, you're gonna be. Oh, Jules, can I get that? You're gonna be jealous, Jules. I, when I went to Halloween Comic Fest, they actually had Halloween Comic Fest Itty Bitty Hellboy buttons. And Wait, I have I, one. I have some. Ron, Ron gave us like what six? He gave us like six of them. We got him like Good. a while ago, though. So I was excited. Yeah, I just grabbed a whole bunch. I was like, "Ooh, itty bitty Hellboy!" And they are coming out with in January. They are going to have itty bitty Battlestar Galactica. Yes. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> little, oh, that's oh, what I'm that's talking about. What? In January, Jules, hold up Itty Bitty Hellboy again. Hold up Itty Bitty Hellboy again so she can kind of see the artwork. Itty Bitty Battlestar Galactica? Yeah, you see the artwork? Yes, or it, you see that artwork there? Yeah. It's going to Battlestar yeah. Galactica along that artwork. <laughs> and it's original oh, Battlestar. I, I, I might start dancing. It is original <laughs> Battlestar. It is Lauren Green Battlestar. Yes. I was so All excited. Right. I know. Lauren Green. Sorry. One time I figured out, uh, I had this... Uh, this formula I had figured out how Lauren Green was the devil, but uh, I forget how I, I worded it. I think like, <laughs> I think his name like all he has three. His first, middle, and last name all start with. They all have six letters. Well, they're doing like little Battlestar Galactica, little Vampirella, little Ernie, a little like Bionic Man, and one other little. I don't remember what it was that they're that they're doing. Oh, Pedro, so cool. I wanted to start that oh, book, man. Everybody tells me Animal Man's like oh, the best. Oh, it's so good. I'm really behind on it, though, but it's really good. I do not read Wonder Woman, you know? That's Wonder Woman, I have that. Get into. I can't. I started it. reading it, and then I dropped it later. Yeah, man, Pedro got a button. Yeah, man, they, they had all these first printings, first printings of uh, Snyder's Batman, like, and all these are all these are like first print like English versions, and like that probably costs fifty bucks here. <laughs> Which I don't have. You got some valuable here. books there, my friend. I don't have it here with me, but I do say I did find something cool for Chief uh, during on Halloween Comic Fest. I found Chief a number one of Journey into Mystery, number one. Oh yeah, you showed me the picture. Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, original, that's gonna be awesome. Story and it's the one. horror journey in the mystery too. It's the horror one, original. <laughs> it's story. the Robert E. Howard one. Yes. Oh, that's cool. So that is gonna be. I need to read on <sighs> That is gonna be coming so with me when I come up there, Chief, for you. That is yours, yeah, so my friend. We'll have this come awesome. Out. I have I Cataclysm too. I didn't get that. Yet. Uh, I didn't pick that up. What is? Oh, I can't see it. You're all blurry. <laughs> Oh, oh! I got it, but I haven't read it. But yeah, it looks good. I am so excited. Um, January's cover of Harley Quinn. It's it's a story. Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy. Poison Ivy have to go save little puppies and kitties. <laughs> and the cover, right the cover, the cover is Poison Ivy, and she has yeah, like a ferret. She has like a ferret on her head, and she's surrounded by dogs and cats. But like the dogs and cats. Like, it looks like they're all alive. All the dogs and cats are alive, but it looks like they were fighting something because there's blood, like, everywhere. Oh, but, but the synopsis was that her, her and Poison Ivy have to go save dog, uh, puppies and kitties. Oh, oh that's nice, Pedro. What are, how many of those... I love how many of those did you I get, man? Cover. Yeah, how much of your... How many of... This, how many, this number eight. Number eight. How many, those are old school over. How many Brazilians did you spend on that? Three? Uh, I pay like uh, four dollars. Damn, that's not bad. That's not bad. Hey, is that when the Hulk was like the leg breaker for the mob when he wore the suit? Yeah. He like yeah. lost his memory and became like a leg breaker for the mafia. I, yeah, I, I love this. That's, a, that's old school. That, that's where he wore the like the Fine. black mesh mask over his eyes. I'm gonna show off my Superior Spider-Man Lego cover. My Lego Superior Spider. I have it though. <laughs> He's so I paid to play seventeen bucks for mine though. Because he like he can he can like uh, swing. 
Oh, I can't think right now. My brain's shutting down. Uh, Megan, this is the book by Comic Book Men. <laughs> yeah, it it's it's it looks pretty awesome. It, it's weird as all hell, but it's great. <laughs> is, is this a book? Oh, I've got to Anybody? Anybody read it? Uh, I, have I haven't read, read that, that one. one. I read the first Sex Criminals. Sex Criminals is fantastic. That, was, that I bought for you. I love I love Sex Criminals. Yeah, I, I, I find it and I awesome book, Sex Criminals. I don't know oh, if it's Megan. any good. Megan, have you heard about sex criminals? Have you been enlightened as to sex as to sex no, criminals? No, but I, I, I honestly don't think that's you. This is a book I, about. There's a title for you. It's a book about a guy and a girl who find out that when they reach their sexual climax, they can stop time. It's pretty weird. I read it's the first fantastic. one. The first issue. The first issue takes you on the woman's self discovery of her body. And then the second issue is the man's, <laughs> and it is a complete 180 from the females. It is great, absolutely. Love I've it. got the second one in digital, but I haven't read the I haven't read the second one yet. I'm sorry, I love anything by Dirty Matt Fraction. Oh, I got yeah. comic boards. <laughs> I got comic boards. Matt Fraction, period. Anything I by I forgot to tell you guys, I bought Arkham Origins. Oh, good. I finally I bought. I didn't get Lego. I bought Arkham Origins, and I'm stuck on Dustro. I, I have. The, I'm stuck on Lego, so don't the, feel bad. <laughs> I just can't get through the next level. <laughs> like I said, I'm through the whole story mode. Those Lego games are tough. I Those Lego games to are kind of tough. You got to think what you're doing. How many? You got the first Hawkeye, Ow. right? You got the you got the number one single issue, didn't you? Yeah. That's that's the single play. issue. Man, and you I know what that thing's it. going for on eBay? Ooh, I have it. I'm gonna come to Brazil and buy comics. <laughs> hey, so have, you guys have to. Uh, them. Hey, you guys have to tell me what's a uh, really good, print. expensive comic um, that would sell on eBay is that I need that I that I my character in my film would hack. Uh, let's see. The, uh, no Holy cow! There's so many like good. A really good. New Mutants ninety eight is pretty pricey. And uh, man, any Something any. That, uh, Golden Age book. Amazing Any Golden Age book you can think of is going to sell for a ton. Uh, Incredible Amazing Hulk. Yeah, any, any old. Incredible Hulk, what, 181? 180, 181, first appearance of Wolverine? First Wolverine, yeah. And, uh, 180, 181? I don't even know what, what number, like any old Batman Golden Age book could be just look that up and, and, oh, and which, pick no, one. That's what I was all those are kind of after crazy. It was first appearance of Wolverine, actually. Mm-hmm. Which where is Not it? Not even yeah, Wolverine in, uh, one, but it was first a first appearance of Wolverine, but I didn't know what issue was it was in. I need to find it. So I. That can... runs across like two or three issues, I think. But the first one's one eighty one, I'm sure. Yeah, of Hulk. I think and, uh, I have it on Hulk. Yeah, Incredible Hulk, <laughs> volume <laughs> one, I think. Yeah, piercing the one eighty. Yeah, Incredible Hulk, and then volume one, one eighty one. Please. Okay. I need yeah. Oh yeah, Pedro is. He's on the last page of 180, though, right? That's yeah, the, is that what you're saying? Like, he's like he appears like yeah. in the last panel. Cameo 180. Yeah. And then 181 is his first one story. Yeah. Yep. Which I need to I need to find it so I can show Ooh. Megan. I don't know where I put it. I actually have the first. But it's volume. Point. It's volume one. Volume one. Yeah, it's it's the first run of the Hulk. It's uh, they've renumbered it and like. Started it over a bunch of times, but yeah, volume, volume one of Incredible Hulk, number like, probably I'd say one. Well, how many issues is he in? Is it like didn't it go to like one eighty two or something or one eighty three? He's in uh, it for. It's like one eighty no one eighty one eighty one. I don't. I, maybe it was in one eighty two. I don't remember. I'm but trying to find. It. I thought there was a third. You book. want one eighty one? One eighty. He appears in the last one eighty one. You want one eighty one? That's when you want. Is the story? Okay. It's just I need I need my character to hack the eBay for it. Yeah, I would and hack for one eighty one. I would hack for one eighty one. She she hack she hacks it and wins the auction for a dollar. Nice. <laughs> I can't find it. I have first appearance so of that's ah. I have to find it. I have first appearance of poison ivy. 
somewhere around here. I have first. So you don't think that the the 180? You don't think the very first appearance of Wolverine would be would be uh, something that. 180. No, I think that would personally that would be more valuable. 181 is goes first for a lot more. Image. 181. 181 always goes for a lot more than 180. 181 yes. goes for more. Yes. I will. I I guarantee you. And then yep. the he always tells me, if you see that at the flea market, you better buy it. <laughs> well, you'll never see that at a flea market. <laughs> I know. We just hope that some like unsuspecting person just has it laying there and then, like walk up and then we're like, oh my god! But you can't be too excited. Then they'll be like, oh wait, no. Some like that, I'd feel really guilty if they were selling it too cheap. I'd be like, yeah. Two of Dracula like, one. Yeah, two of uh, Dracula number one. Uh, I don't know if I would. I'm I trying to find it. my first Poison I always, Ivy I so I can show Megan. Because so. I have it here somewhere. I feel kind of bad because I'd be like, oh, you're letting this go with you cheap. I got my 12 bucks. Not We're even. showing old comics. I got Amazing Spider-Man 62. I got some other cool old ones, but they're too far away to go get right now. Spider-Man, Spider-Man. The man thing. Yeah, the man thing. Hey, I love the man thing. That's, Vin's going to fight you for that, I, man. I love man. I crave I man thing. I even crave giant size man thing. You know how I feel about giant size man thing. We did get this. I have. Let's see. I well, have a cover hand. You know what? Looking at the clock, though. We've, I like man thing, too. Looking honestly. at the clock... We have had a great time tonight, but it is time to say adieu, adieu. So make sure you check back next week as we delve into the fiasco that was Villains Month and uh, talk about the fiasco. <laughs> I haven't even read them. <laughs> we'll talk about the fiasco that is Forever Evil because it takes it seems like it's taking freaking forever for them freaking books to come out. Oh, man. But uh, be back here, and also don't forget, December 27th through the 29th, Anime Apocalypse. Saturday Anime 20th, Apocalypse. Uh, Saturday the 28th, 9 a.m. will be our live panel. Put on your PJs, come on down. We're going to have giveaways, cookies, muffins, the whole nine yards. Pajamas. Bring your pajamas. Panda's going to be on One lucky pajamas. guest can sit next to the chief <laughs> on the panel. We'll have a drawing. We'll have a drawing. You can, can come up sit and next to me. Us. Uh, you never know. Maybe Megan will have some. We'll we'll send some cool stuff to give away. But uh, until next time, Speaking remember. Of Megan, there she is. Next time, remember. Uh-huh. It was short pack. In the realm of life, we are all but geeks at heart. Good night and good luck.